Mic check, mic check. Okay, I'm good. This partially led to, um, this was part of the catalyst for, um, of Chicago's great dance halls. <laughs> 80, 146. What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to Chicago. Today, we're in one of the Windy City's hidden gem neighborhoods, and you'll never guess how it got its name. In this film, we're gonna show you why Uptown is one of the best areas of the city through storytelling, exploration, and of course, some of the best food in the entire country. Before we walk the streets of this landmark hood, you know what to do. Go ahead and finesse that like button, and now, let's explore Uptown. community area number three, part of the north side and about six miles from the loop. The official borders are Foster on the north, Lake Michigan on the east, Irving Park on the south, and Clark and Ravenswood on the west. The community area is made up of smaller neighborhoods, Wenna Park, Sheridan Park, Margate Park, a portion of Andersonville, and Asia and Argyle, which we covered in a previous film. The sun is shining and the coffee is a brewing. We are at Ridman's Coffee, a neighborhood coffee spot here in Uptown. They are stocked with dark matter coffee beans, my personal favorite. We got a special blend today, which we've never tried before, called Nectar Gadget. The coffee's got notes of nectarine and chocolate. They also serve up pastries from Flower Bakery up in Edgewater. We got a croissant and an apricot danish. Super light, this is the butter croissant, but I'm ready for my first bite. So flaky, great buttery flavor. My favorite way to start the morning, black coffee and a croissant. Good morning from Uptown and Ridman's Coffee. This is the local place to go if you're looking for a nice little breakfast in the morning. Got myself a little Danish and a dark matter coffee. When I was looking at it in the window, it looked to me like it was an egg yolk. I got fooled because I found out it was an apricot Danish. <laughs> several ways to get to Uptown that don't involve the use of a car, like taking the CTA red line to the Wilson or Argyle stop. Those of you watching this film in 2024 can also get off at Lawrence. Hop on the 22, 36, 78, 80, or 146 bus to get to and from the neighborhood. And it's located right on Lake Michigan, so you can walk, bike, or scoot up the lakefront trail. Edgewater Beach, Graceland West, and Wrigleyville are next door neighborhoods. <laughs> Once upon a time, Chicago's indigenous peoples lived in Uptown. Then in the 19th century, German and Swedish farmers took up residence in the area. Modern Uptown got its start as a collection of residential developments in the Lakeview Township, which became part of the city of Chicago in 1898. The first quarter of the 20th century saw a commercial boom and some of the most beautifully designed hotels and theaters in all of Chicago. Uptown went from rural suburb to arguably the trendiest shopping and entertainment district in the entire city. Once again, this reminds us how quickly an urban neighborhood can change, something we should really keep in mind in modern times. It has been an incredible morning in Uptown and it's about to get even better because we're at Demora for lunch, an authentic Ethiopian restaurant right in the heart of Uptown. They've been here since 2007. They've been in publications from Zagat to the Michelin Guide and now right here on this channel. The owner is from Ethiopia, but she's lived in Chicago for the past 20 plus years and learned to cook this amazing food right from her family. Very popular within the Ethiopian American community in the Windy City. We're starting off our lunch at Demora with the Sambusa sampler. We got five of them right here. Chicken, beef, spinach, cheese, and lentil. You can order this individually. I'm excited that we got the sampler plate because you could try all five different kinds. This one right here is the cheese. I'm gonna try it with the sauce. It smells pretty smoky. Yum. This is the spinach sambusa. Mmm, I love spinach, like Popeye. I really like the sauce too, it's a little bit sweet, spice, a little smoky too. Try one more. I think this is the beef sambusa. Uh, I gotta put that sauce on there, it's so good. For our main, we went with the Siga Alicia, which I've had before. It's a beef and a sauce cubed up, split peas on the side, and of course, everything comes with injera bread. You don't need utensils for a meal like this, so let's get into some Ethiopian food. Let me show you how to do this. You break off a piece of this bread. It's not gonna be perfect, so just do your best. And then, you get over to your meat or whatever. Put a little bit in there. I'm gonna put some 
split peas in there too, why not, right? Here we go. Mmm, incredible flavors. This is such a good restaurant. Out. To truly understand this era, we gotta remind ourselves that this was a time before television, personal computers, and YouTube. Going out for your entertainment, whether wholesome or X-rated, was a thing that everybody did. But in order to compete with other shopping and entertainment districts around the city like Woodlawn and The Loop, the local business association decided to borrow some swag from the Big Apple. Lauren's house is a beautifully restored vintage apartment hotel. And in the lobby, they have a Heritage Outpost coffee. You may recall from our West Loop neighborhood guide, we went to the Heritage Bikes and Coffee. Now it's time for just the Heritage, no bikes this time. We got a couple of freshly made espressos with Intelligentsia beans. It's great to enjoy coffee in a space like this. Amazing lighting and some cool music. Salud. In 1913, Evanston Avenue, along with over 400 other streets around the city, was renamed. The new name, Broadway, comes from the famous street and theater district in New York City. A couple of years later, a former department manager at Marshall Fields & Company decided to open his own business in the neighborhood, the Loren Miller & Company Department Store. Miller is credited as the first to use the uptown name, once again borrowing from New York City. He started using it shortly after opening up his store in order to make the area even more attractive to people around the city. In 1921, he printed a circular entitled the Uptown Advertiser, which pretty much cemented the name. Graceland Cemetery came to life in the 1860s and is home to some of the most prominent Chicagoans of all time. Potter Palmer, George Streeter, Mies van der Rohe, Ernie Banks, Louis Sullivan, and Daniel Burnham are just some of the who's who of Graceland's residents. It's also a certified arboretum and a great place to see the leaves change. Graceland is a perfect example of a Victorian style cemetery. These were designed more to be parks because death was a lot closer to people's everyday lives back in the 1800s. It is for sure an off the beaten path thing to do here in Chicago. What's the dilly yo? We hope you're enjoying this. The greatest film ever produced about Uptown. If you are, make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 200,000 by the end of 2022. And once we do, we're gonna throw a party in Chicago and New York City. Some of the most famous theaters from this amazing time in Uptown's history are still standing today. The Aragon opened up in 1926 as a luxurious ballroom. The building has a beautiful Spanish Moorish design. This wasn't the kind of dance club that we'll go to today with a DJ and a large crowd jumping to the music. The Aragon hosted 40, 50 member bands playing swing music and jazz music, and it's estimated that up to 50 million people danced the night away here at the Aragon. After it closed down and stopped being used as a dance hall, it had many different purposes like a bingo hall, a boxing ring, even a roller skating rink. And today it survives as a live music venue, definitely one of the finest examples of Uptown's beautiful architecture. The Uptown Theater was the crown jewel of the Balaban and Katz Theater chain and has clearly seen better days. Its grand opening in 1925 was such a huge deal that then Mayor William E. Deva declared it Uptown Chicago Week. This Spanish revival masterpiece was the largest theater on the planet until the opening of NYC's Radio City Music Hall several years later. It sadly closed in 1981 and we're still here waiting for its restoration and reopening. Uptown also became famous for its beautifully designed mansions and apartment hotels. The architecture of this neighborhood was a huge departure from that of the Loop, which had more classical styles. The building on Sheridan, just north of Irving Park, was once home to the Cairo Supper Club and was built in 1920. It is a super rare example of Egyptian revival architecture. It is a Chicago landmark, so hopefully someday someone will turn it into something amazing. Things were so great for this neighborhood that it earned the nickname, The Loop's Little Brother. But then, Prohibition came to the country and it devastated Uptown's entertainment businesses. This was followed up by the Great Depression. Over the years, Chicago has been many things. A railroad hub, a meatpacking industry leader, and yes, even a movie production town. SNA Studios was one of the largest and earliest film studios in the entire United States. They were founded in 1907 by George Spohr and Gilbert Anderson, hence the name SNA. They only lasted about a decade though. Who was their biggest star? Well, none other than Charlie Chaplin. Unfortunately, he had one Chicago winter and decided to skip town to California, and that's where the whole movie industry ended up heading 
setting as we know today, Hollywood. The weather's more constant, you don't have these brutal winters, but the studios still stand. This is Chicago's most important connection to Hollywood. I guess by having this YouTube channel and producing these films all over the city of Chicago, we're carrying on the legacy of SNA Studios. <music> The one-two punch of Prohibition and the Great Depression wouldn't be the last of Uptown's troubles. The next few decades ushered in even more changes. Luxury homes and apartment hotels were converted into boarding houses, sketchy entertainment replaced sophisticated films, and the neighborhood began to decline. Uptown's demographics changed as well, with white flight to the suburbs and immigration from around the country that included Japanese from California, American Indians from all over the Midwest and Oklahoma, and Appalachian whites. The high availability of low-cost housing made Uptown a landing spot for recently arrived immigrants from around the globe. Soon, Uptown became one of the most densely populated areas of the city. It's pizza time here in Uptown, so we're making a stop to Millie's Pizza in the Pan, founded by Robert Molesky. He started off as a ghost kitchen in Logan Square before moving to this brick and mortar location right here in Uptown on Argyle, and they specialize in Chicago-style pan pizza. They have pies on the menu like the Untitled, the Craigslist.org, Clickbait, Updog, and Que Suerte. Today we went with the most popular pie, the Untitled Pepperoni Jalapeno, and he spiced it up for us with some red peppers and some fresh ricotta. This looks absolutely incredible. Incredible. You know I don't use fork and knife for a pizza like this. I definitely gotta eat it with my hands. Let's go. Oh my God. Yo. We got it hot and fresh out the oven. The sauce is super savory. The crust has a nice bouncy chew to it. The pepperoni and the jalapeno. Little bit of spice in there. Not too much, which is perfect for me. I gotta go for another bite. Mm. Got a beautiful caramelized crust. We were so hyped to come to Millie's Pizza in the Pan and we watched him put the pie together. It exceeded all of our expectations. Seriously, one of the greatest pizzas I've ever had. It has been many years since I've had RC. Salud. Robert named Millie's Pizza after his grandmother, Emily. This was a pandemic success story. We got to watch Robert put this pizza together and it was so cool. All right, I cut myself a slice. This pizza has so much flavor. Because it's pizza in the pan, I think the dough is able to be more puffy. <sighs> Look at that cheese bowl. <laughs> Gusto Nation, you know that we only eat the best of the best Chicago and New York pizzas, and Millie's Pizza in the Pan is an instant favorite. Many mental patients previously under the care of the state of Illinois were released into Uptown as the neighborhood continued its freefall. In response, residents and local businesses banded together and successfully got this neighborhood designated as a conservation area. This helped Uptown benefit from the Urban Community Conservation Act of 1953, giving it federal funds to improve the neighborhood. Other local organizations were formed to help Uptown's distinct population, for example, the St. Augustine Center for American Indians and the Council of the Southern Mountains. In 1970, Mayfair built a new campus in Uptown and renamed themselves Truman College. The Clifton Avenue Street Art Gallery is a dynamic open art museum that showcases some of the best artists from around Chicago. The colorful murals make a great backdrop for social media pictures or just a nice stroll after a great meal here in Uptown. Obviously, it's completely free and part of what makes Chicago such a great city for both artists and art lovers. Pro tip, if you really want to impress a date, bring them here to see all this wonderful art. Despite the efforts, by that time, the name Uptown had a seriously negative connotation, which led to part of the neighborhood breaking off and becoming Edgewater in 1980. In the late 20th and early 21st century, immigrants from Central America, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East have become part of the fabric of Uptown. In the modern era, Uptown has seen some serious improvements. It benefits from a location right on the lake, access to Lincoln Park, and the CTA Red Line, which is currently undergoing one of the most significant modernization projects of all time. The Green Mill got its start in 1909 as a beer garden. And the name? Some say it's a play on Red Mill, AKA Moulin Rouge. Prohibition essentially closed the beer garden, but the Green Mill survived. And today it's one of the quintessential Chicago experiences. There are shows just about every day. Some are even free.
Through the story of Uptown, we can learn how to plan a great neighborhood. And though it went through a rough patch, things are definitely looking up for this landmark Chicago neighborhood. A thriving art and restaurant scene, along with some of the most beautifully preserved architecture in Chicago, will ensure that Uptown not only returns to its former glory, but exceeds it. Will we ever live to see the lights at Uptown Theater come on once again? Well, one can only hope. Peace and blessings.